surprise this morning. We've got a full house here today. Y'all get a picture. You got a picture today. Look at all them pictures. And get a picture of the picture. We'll put it that way. <laughs> and uh, I can be here. And, uh, they got about everybody about where they sit too. So uh, that was a blessing. <laughs> and so ever, I don't know who all had a part in that, but <laughs> but I did like it. <laughs> And uh, maybe, though, we'll get to get back to normal here in a few days. I hope so. And, uh, and uh, get back to the, the ordinary church uh, well, as we know how to have it. And, you know, a lot of places in the, in the country uh, have church different in different ways and their service goes a lot different and, uh, but 
we're used, we're uh, sort of used to doing it the way we do it, and we're like everybody else. We we don't like no change, but we're having to change, and uh, sometimes change is for the better, and sometimes change is for the worse. But I've always believed that if it ain't working, you can always change it. But. Uh, we're just, like I've said before, we're making the best of, a, of the situation. And we're glad that you're tuning in with us this morning. And uh, we're going to just go right on and, and, uh, and get into the message. I've got, uh, uh, I don't know how lengthy it might be, but it might be a little bit uh, longer today than usual. But uh, I want to read today from the, from the book of Judges, uh, chapter 6. Be, be chapter 6 and, and going over to chapter 7. And, uh, and we're, we are always, uh, our heart is always at the church and we're, we're constantly thinking about everybody. And uh, that's just the way God's people are. You, you, when you, you, when you get right with God, you just love the church. Amen. He said, you know, the writer in Hebrews 10, 25 says, Forsaken not the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some is, even so much more as you see the day approaching. And I've already caught myself a looking here at the, at these pictures when I'm preaching, so uh, that'll be all right. <laughs> that'll be all right. But we like to congregate. We like the fellowship, and uh, and that's where our strength comes in. Our strength in unity. But we hope and trust this message will be a blessing to you this morning. And uh, we want to read for first. We want to read the the. the in the, chip, in the sixth chapter of, uh, of Judges, it said, the, ver the first verse says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which, were, which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And look what evil will do for you. It'll cause you to want to crawl the hole. It'll cause you wanting to hide in the dens and the rocks and the mountains. But jump on over there at the 15th verse. And you Bible readers probably doesn't know where I'm going. But in the 15th verse, and he said unto him, speaking of Gideon here, said, where shall I save Israel? Gideon said, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, surely I will be with thee. How many knows that God will be with you? Praise the Lord. He ain't going to never leave us. He said he'd never leave us. He'd never forsake us. When God has seen far away in my life, it wasn't God's fault. It was mine. Because he said to draw nigh to God. And he'll draw nigh to you. Resist the devil. And he will flee. That's right. And he said, and the Lord said unto him, surely I will be with thee. And thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. 
Amen. He shall smite the Midianites at one man. As one man. I want to preach on a thought this morning. Over in the, over in the seventh chapter. Verse 21. It says. And they stood. Every man. And they stood. Every man. In his place. Round about the camp. And all the host ran. And cried. And fled. Every man. In his place. Every man. In his place. You know what's wrong with a lot of people today. Beloved. They're out of their place. You got to get in your place. You got to get where God wants you. You got to get where you can work for him. You got to get to where you can stand for him. You got to get to where you can fight for him. And it's all about him anyway. Every man in his place. The people did evil in the sight of the Lord. And when, and when you do evil in the sight of the Lord, then, uh, uh, then punishment comes. You'll be, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Ain't that right? Amen. So you can't overcome evil with evil. You've got to overcome evil with good. You got to go to God when things come, when when troubles and trials come our way. Don't run away from God. Run to God, cause He's your only refuge. He's the only help. And when you get in the right place, God will show up. God will see that you get victory in your life. Amen. So. And they cried unto the Lord. And God selects an old poor boy. And his name is Gideon. Amen. Praise his good name. And Gideon, he, he chose Gideon to deliver his people. And I want to I speak here about getting in the right place. Gideon. Like all the rest of us, he asked God for a sign, didn't he? He asked him to wet his fleece. Then he asked him that it be dry. Anyway, God showed him this sign. And he done just exactly what he said. He still didn't, still didn't like the answer, did he? So anyway, go, go back and read this one. When the broadcast is over here, uh, and go back and read it, and, it, and, and you'll find uh, how that God worked with Gideon. And there's a whole lot more to this. I ain't got time to get into it. But Gideon asked for a sign. And the first Bible, the first message I ever preached was over in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, I believe. It said, An, an evil and an adulterous generation seeketh for a sign but there'll be no sign given but that of Jonas the prophet Amen. as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly so shall also the son of man be in the heart of the earth we're not going to get no sign this day. Some people say, well, all this is going on just a sign. I'm going to tell you the only sign you're going to get from God, it's already here. Amen. And that's the gospel. That's the pure and simple gospel. The, and he said right there, when, old, when John said, go ask him, John the Baptist said, go ask him if he's the one or should we look for another? He said, and when they went up there and they asked him, said, are you the one or should he look for another? Jesus said, you go back there and tell old John. Just tell him that the, the blind have received.
receive their sight. Tell him that the lepers are cleansed. Tell him that the gospel has been preached to the poor. That's all you're going to have to tell him. And the only sign we're going to have today, the only sign we need to get to God is already recorded in the right down here in this blessed old book. It's called the gospel. And the gospel is the power of God and the salvation to all them that believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But too many people are looking for signs and seeking signs when the only sign we need today, beloved, is this sign of salvation Amen. by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. All we need. Dad's got a bumper sticker on his truck. Jesus is all that I need. I've got news for you. He's all you needed yesterday. He's all we need today. And he'll be all we need tomorrow. What else do you need? If you're out there today and you're lost, you need a person, a person-to-person -person relationship with Jesus Christ, your Amen. Lord and Savior. Amen. Too many people looking, looking at this and looking at that and looking for this sign and looking for that sign. Don't need no sign. You just need to get in the right place. Amen. Amen. I looked for everything and thought about everything, but when I got to the right place, I felt, I, I figured out all I needed was God. Amen. All I needed was forgiveness of my sin. Like old Thomas. Thomas was the doubter. He said, I'm not done. He said, they told Thomas, after the resurrection of Jesus, they said, Thomas, we have seen the Lord. Thomas said, I'm not going to believe till I, till I see him. I'm not going to believe till I can touch him. I'm not going to believe. Now, we know that. We know. And Thomas went down in history as a doubter. Oh, doubting Thomas. But one day, they was, they, was get, they was getting together, and the Lord just walked right through. Right, walked right through the door, didn't he? He said, come here, Thomas, look at me, feel me. He said, a spirit don't have flesh and bones such as I have. Thomas said, my Lord and my God. He was in the right place that day. But, <laughs> glory to God. You remember the day that you was in the right place? You was in the perfect place to, to believe? He said, Thomas, you believe because you've seen. But blessed are they that are not seen, yet believe. That's me and you. Amen. I ain't never been there. I ain't never. Well, let me take that back. I have been there. I've seen the empty tomb. But I knew it was empty before I got there. Somebody said, do you feel anything when you walk down in? I said, no, I know it was empty before I ever walked in. I know that when the tomb was empty, before I ever got on there, Amen. I didn't need to see nothing to believe. Did you? Oh, I wasn't there by the shores of Galilee. I wasn't there when it seemed feed the, the multitude. I wasn't there when they nailed him to the cross. I wasn't there when he rose. But I still believe. Amen. That's the key. You've got to get into the place today. Friend, where you can believe that God is God. And there ain't no no other God. Praise God. We've got people looking for a lot of things and trusting in a lot of things. And, and you've got to get in the right place to, to see God. You know what? What does it take? What, what, does, what does people have to do to get in the right place? To see God. Right here's what some of you ain't going to like. But now this, this is the truth. You have to give up some things. Right. To see God. You have to give up your idols. Gideon. 
You have to give up these idols in your life. Gideon, uh, he tore down, destroyed the idols of Baal and the altars. He got rid of them. And he gave, to, and even gave, and then took the wood and uh, availed to God. And God knows, you know, we know what we need to do to get rid of our idols. These little islands that, 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 uh, that clouds up our mind. These islands that's taken time away from our family, these islands that takes that that separates us from God. That's that's, that's what an idol is. An idol is, is anything that would separate you, that you would put before God and separate us from from God. And so you need you got to get rid of, uh, of the islands and and you get in the right place. You've got to to allow. Let the Spirit of the Lord speak to you. And let the Spirit of the Lord and O Gideon begin to listen to, to what God was trying to tell him. And God was going to fight this battle a whole lot different than what O Gideon thought it needed to be. When it started out with 32,000 men, O Gideon thought he had him a pretty good army there. Well, since you're going to use me, you know, he told him what, what he was, but Remember, the Lord said he was a mighty man of valor. He said, I'm gonna, he said, well, since you're going to use me, I think I got a pretty good number. God said, you've got way too many. You've got way too many people. Gideon? Gideon probably didn't think so. But he allowed the Spirit of the Lord to speak to him. And if you want to get in the right place to find God, you've got to listen to the Spirit of the Lord. It's not always in the, in the earthquake. It's not always in the fire. But sometimes it's in the still, small voice. You say, listen to, some people say, listen to that preacher. He can really preach. He just loud. I like old saying said, well, what did you preach or preach on this morning? I don't know what he preached on. What was the subject of the text? I don't know. Boy, he really preached. He was just loud. It ain't how loud you shout or how high you jump. It's how straight you walk when you hit the ground. Amen. Ain't that right? You've got to get in the right place where God can use you. So God used Gideon and 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 they were 32,000 soldiers but, were to, but, but returned was 22,000 because they were afraid. That was the first little sip that he made. That's the first little separation. And you, can't, you, you can't get in the right place with God through the spirit of fear. And I've always said this, if I can scare you in this thing, somebody else will scare you out of it. Uh, and I don't, I don't go along with these scare tactics to get you in the right place with God. What will get you in the right place? With, what gets me in the right place with God? The same thing that gets everybody, and that's the cross. Amen. The cross, the message of God ain't never changed. You can't get... You can't, you know, you will not come under subjection to fear. You come, you, in other words, you won't, you won't commit. Let me change that. You will not commit to fear, but you will commit to love. And then there's a whole lot in that word called love. But right here, you've got to be ready to fight in God's army. Apostle Paul said, he said, I fought a good fight. Let me back up. He said, I'm now ready to be offered the time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, 
The righteous judge shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all them that love his appearing. So you got to be ready to fight. You got to get in the place when you're ready to fight this fight. Hey Amen. This, this virus that's going around our country today caught us all by surprise. But deep down inside of me, I hey, I the, hey, the love of God's down in my heart, the love of God's down in your heart. Hey, we're ready to fight when you got God. Hey. The devil can't take you by surprise. Right. I've been a fighting him. I fight him every day of the week, don't you? He's, he's our adversary. He's our enemy. So you need to stay in the, in the place where you can fight. Because if, uh, if, if he ain't battle with him today, just get ready. You'll battle with him tomorrow. If you don't battle with him tomorrow, just get ready. He'll be around next week. But you have to get in the right place to fight the enemy. The men that drunk the water with their hands were the ones that were ready to fight. I preached this a long time ago. How do you drink in your water? God wants to know how you're drinking this water. And you know, and the scripture tells us if we're willing and obedient, we shall eat the good of the land. And old Simon Peter, you remember he was, he was, he was, he said, well, Lord, I'm, 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 uh, he's known as the six foot bold Galilean. If you wanted trouble, he was the one to go to. He was the one He'd cut your ear off that quick. He was the one that said, Lord, I'm, I'm willing to go through anything for you, Lord. I'm ready to even give my life. I'm ready to die for you. You've got to be ready. Oh, Peter, Simon Peter was full of faith. And like all the rest of us, we're full of faith today. Then And then... Before the old rooster crows, we might say, we might try to back up a little bit. He even denied knowing him three times. Thank God for his grace, though. And in, in right here in First uh, Peter, it says we got to be ready at all times to answer and to do anything that God asks us. And, it, and, and, and it's plain that that's where we have our hope. So we have to make a long story short right here. We, we ask for signs, but God has to get us in the right place. And number three here, God, but the good thing about it is God assures us that we're going to be winners. God lets us know, beloved, let me tell you something. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. I, if you get in the right place, in, your right, in the right place with God and get in your right place, hey, I've got news for you. Oh, Satan might try to, 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 <clears throat> to, to hinder you, but hey, you've got victory in Jesus I heard an old, old story how the Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning of his precious blood atoning. Then I got in the right place to where I repented of my sin, and then I won the victory. But God assures, get in here, you're going to win this thing. Gideon didn't know he was, uh, he didn't like the way he was fighting, but he had to know that, uh, he had to believe and have faith in God that God was going to deliver him or he wouldn't have done what he done. Let me hurry up here. So right there in the, in chapter uh, uh, seven, he says, but if thou, in verse 10, he said, but if thou fear to go down, 
Go thou with favor thy servant down to the host, and thou shalt hear what they say, and afterwards shall thy hands be strengthened to go down to the host. Then when he down, when he down with Fura, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host, and the Midianites, verse 12, and the Midianites and all the children of the east laid along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told him a dream. And I love this part of the scripture right here. Told him a dream until his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream. And lo, a cake of barley, bread tumbled in the host of Midian, and came into a tent, and smote it that it fell, and overturned it that the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon. The son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hand has God delivered Midian. He got in the right place. When you get in the right place, God will deliver you. Amen. Every man, notice this right here in closing. Every man in his own place, every man had a trumpet to blow. Amen. Every man had a trumpet to blow. When he got down to his 300 men, Every man had a trumpet to blow. And we are to blow the trumpet. Praise God. We need to sound the trumpet. Uh, the trumpet is the, is the battle cry. We, uh, we need to declare war on the devil and sin. and every, War on the devil and sin and everything. And these drugs and everything that's uh, happening in our land. We just need to blow the trumpet of God. We need to sound the trumpet in Zion and let everybody know that they, you ain't going to get out of this. It's trouble, it's trouble, it's trouble. But there's victory in Jesus. If we'll hold on to Him, we can't lose. Glory, hallelujah. Sound your trumpet. Lift up your voice as of a trumpet and tell the people what good and, and what how good God is and how evil and wrong that Satan and sin can do to them. Amen. Every man's got a trumpet to blow. God didn't save you just to sit on a pew. God didn't save you just to lay just lay down and play dead. God saved you to sound the trumpet. He has chosen you. You're one of Gideon's 300 men. Everybody's got a place. Get in your place and blow your trumpet. Let's hurry right here. Every man had a light to shine. Every man had a lamp. Let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works. Get in, get them standing for the right thing. What's important, you think, folks, in, in, in times like these, in days like this? It's, it's not jumping out on a log and, and, and telling, telling people what, what you think is going to happen. I told somebody the other day, I don't know what's going to happen. God didn't call me to, to do such. He called me to preach the cross. He called me to, to, to try to, 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 to lift you up through the gospel. I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody else does. But I, I do know this. God's going to help you in this time. Whatever you have to go through. I believe there's grace for every need. Oh, if we get every preacher preaching the cross. I believe, I believe if we get every man of God in this country to get back to the basics and preach the cross of Jesus Christ. Preach being born again and redeemed by this precious blood. Glory to God, and all you have to do about
about the return. He just tell him he's a coming because you don't know when he's a coming. Neither. But let's preach this gospel and keep it as pure as we can keep it. And we'll see revival in this country. Amen. Too many people is, is preaching the wrong things. And everybody's got to get in his place. He told, Apostle Paul told young Timothy, he said, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Because that's coming a time when people will not endure sound doctrine, but they will heap to themselves teachers having itch and ears. We're living in a time where people don't want to uh, somebody said, well, well, they're gospel hardened. I don't know about that. It's just what people's trying to preach to people. Amen. You ain't going to uh, believe just any old thing. My sheep know my voice, he said, and a stranger, they will not fall. Amen. It's not a, a, a sheep's nature to fight and fuss and growl and kick and gout. It's a sheep's nature to be meek and lowly. That a wolf is the one that does all the howling and the fighting and the growling. Ain't that right? Every man stood in his own place round about the camp. Off we get every preacher, every Sunday school teacher, every deacon, every leader in our church, every child of God needs to stand in his right place. Hey, let's go down there and circle it. You're going to win a great big battle with just a little bitty lamp and a little bitty picture in your hand. Amen. And every man stood in his place round about the camp and all the host ran, cried, and fled. Now I've noticed I've never read where any of God's people right here, any of Gideon's men lost their life. And verse 22, and the 300 blew the trumpets. And the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow. He was throughout all the host, and the host fled. Praise God. And that's just exactly what happens when you get in the right place. The devil. Your enemies will. What was he said they done? Said they run. They cried. You know, the devil's the biggest cry baby I've ever seen. Just uh, complain. Ain't he the worst complainer? He just, he, he, he'll run and he'll cry. And he'll moan, and the thing about it is, and then you know what happens to him after that? He's gone. He's fled. <laughs> oh, it's been a joy to preach to all of my people here this morning. All these, uh, say y'all got a picture of them, didn't you? Look back through our, look at our congregation. Now you, hey, that's how, that's how we're doing it during this time. I, I told my guys, I got a full house. And uh, I was blessed by this. And, uh, but that's my message today. If you're out there and you don't know God, get in the place where you can find him. Get around God's people. Fellowship with good. Withdraw fellowship from the evil and the, and the, and the sin. Because evil and sin will put you in a hole somewhere. You're ashamed. It, 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 it's your nature to be, to be ashamed of that wrong. And sin makes you ashamed. Find, get in the right place. Get with God's people. And we're, you know, we, we're not lifted up within our, uh, our, our own pride, but I'm a lot higher. I'm lifted up in what God and Jesus my Savior has done in my life. Like, like the old, uh, the scripture says, I am what I am by the grace of God. And I'm proud of what I am. I'm sure not proud of what I used to be.
but I'm proud of what I am. I'd rather be like the old song says, in this world I've tried most everything. I'm happy now to say, there's nothing like this religion in the good old fashioned way. I'm walking in the grand old highway and I want the world to know I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. So if you're out there today and you don't know the Lord, why don't you find your place? Get out on your knees and cry out to God, have mercy on me, I'm a sinner. Believe that in your heart, confess it with your mouth, and, and then tell it to somebody else. Tell them how good Jesus is. And uh, pray for one another. And I'm sure we got a whole lot of requests. We always bring them on. Tell all the uh, remember all our all these folks on our prayer list that we mention on Wednesday. And good Lord's will, the creek don't rise. We'll be back, uh, and maybe we'll be back in the parking lot Wednesday Wednesday night, weather permitted. And uh, we want to have a word of prayer, and and then. Uh, uh, we love you and thank you for tuning in. And let's remember one another and remember the church, remember our country and our, our soldiers and our doctors and our nurses and our governors and our Senate and our congressmen. We, they all need our prayers and uh, our leaders. And let's pull together in, in, in this whole world and, 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 and we can be all together in Jesus. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this privilege, Lord, that we have this morning. We thank you for all your goodness and your mercy and your grace and your love. We thank you, Lord, for all those that are watching us uh, by means of television, our, our, uh, our internet and, our, and the Facebook and all that. We, we, we thank you for those that are watching and we pray dear God that you'll send a special blessing their way. And God, we thank you for this place that we're in, this place of worship. We thank you for the food on our table, the shoes on our feet. We thank you for this great country that we live in. Lord, this is just a little thing that we're going through, but we know, dear God, that we can overcome. We know that that tomorrow is going to be better. But help us, God, and we ask that you comfort in hand on all those that are sick and afflicted, those in the hospital, the nursing homes, comfort them. Lord, most of all, save our lost before it's everlasting too late. Speak sweet peace to their heart, and may they get in the place where they can believe and trust your God that you're able to deliver them from the sin and the shame that they're in. Now go with us and care for us as only you can. We love you and praise you for all that you do in Jesus' name. And the congregation said, Amen. Amen. And amen. Good day. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord.